Guy medals were named after the distinguished statistician William Guy. They're intended to encourage the cultivation of statistics in scientific contexts and promote the application of numbers to the solution of important problems in all the relations of life in which the numerical method can be employed with a view to determining the laws which regulate them. God, that's cool, isn't it? Those Victorians knew what we were trying to do, didn't they? Okay, so I'd like to start off then with the Guy Medal in silver, um, which doesn't seem to be working. Is this right? Is this clicking? Oh, yeah. The Guy Medal in silver, which is awarded this year to Peter Bullman. The silver medal is awarded to any fellow of the society for a paper or papers of special merit communicated to the society at its ordinary meetings or published in any of its journals. The 2000 medal is awarded to Peter Bullman for his highly cited paper entitled Stability Selection, which was joint with Nikolai Meinshausen, read to the society and published in 2010. It proposes a very general method for improving the performance of an arbitrary variable selection algorithm, but also for his 2016 discussion paper, Causal Inference Using Invariant Prediction, Identification, and Confidence Intervals, which was joint with Jonas Peters and Nikolai Meinshausen again, which introduced a new, ver a new notion of invariance into the causal inference literature and showed how this can be exploited, for instance, to obtain confidence intervals for causal effects. So I'd like to give this award to Peter Bull. Thank you, David. It's, of course, a very great honor to be awarded today the Guy Medal in Silver. Receiving this award from the RSS means a lot to me. The Royal Statistical Society is a most distinguished and the oldest among the major statistical societies. As such, it has had a strong and has a strong tradition of successfully contributing to society, science, and technology by being a key player in promoting and embracing new statistics to the ever-changing needs of the world. Developing statistics for arising needs in applications has been one of my core interests over many years. The results which we achieved would not have been possible without my many collaborators and I thank all of them wholeheartedly. In the citation, Nikolai Meinshausen and Jonas Peters have both been mentioned and both actually contributed a lot. Interestingly, Nikolai appears twice and I should say I always uh, have been very much inspired by his ingenious ideas and outstanding creativity. I'm deeply grateful to my colleagues in the UK for their friendship, for many fascinating, exciting discussions and encouragement. And finally, I would like to thank my wife and my family for supporting me over many years and making my life interesting and beautiful. Thank you. The bronze medal is awarded to a fellow of the society in respect of excellent work presented to any conference or meeting run by the society or published in any of the society's journals. Eligible candidates must be within 15 years of the award of their first degree and other contributions to statistics can be taken into account. So the Guy Medal in Bronze 2018 is awarded to Peng Ding for his methodological and theoretical contributions to causal inference, specifically for his three papers in Journal B of the Society Ding and Liu 2017, Jiang Ding and Geng 2016, and Ding Feller and Miratrix 2016. Despite only having been awarded his PhD in 2015, his work in these three papers provides a groundbreaking theoretical foundation for conducting objective causal inference. Peng. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm deeply honored to receive this uh, prestigious uh, award from the Royal Statistical Society. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, the committee for selecting me this year. Second, I want to thank my ad academic advisors, uh, Professor Zhigan at Peking University, uh, Professor uh, Luke Miatrix, Donna Rubin, and Tyler Vanderweel at Harvard University. They all supported me in various ways during the past few years. 
Third, I want to thank my co-authors, uh, Zhu Chao Jiang, Jianan Lu, and Abi Feller for our joint papers uh, published in Series B. When I was a student, I was puzzled by uh, the regression analysis, especially the interpretation of regression coefficients. Once I asked my professor the following question, if we can regress y on x, then why, why can't we regress x on y? Computers do not distinguish between x and y, but scientists do. So this question is not an easy question. Later I realized uh, this question was related to the causal interpretation of the statistical parameters. I started to read papers on causal inference. Many of them were published in Biometrica and Journal of the Royal Statistical Society. Then I became a big fan of the British style statistics. When I finish a paper, I always first consider submitting it to these journals. I was checking the guy medalist this morning. They are all great statisticians and many of them have influenced my own understanding and research in statistics. The Guy Medal is not only an honor, but also a stimulus for me to work harder to make more contributions to our field. Thank you very much. Um, so the Barnett Award is a named lecture established in memory of Vic Barnett. Uh, it's aimed at encouraging and promoting the recognition of outstanding contributions to the field of environmental statistics, covering methodological development, the application of statistical methods to environmental sciences, or exposition. The Barnett Award is awarded to Peter Diggle for his outstanding and sustained contribution within the field of environmental statistics particularly in relation to the area of environmental health sciences. He is one of the most distinguished and influential statisticians working in the area of developing and fitting statistical models to spatial and spatio-temporal data, and I've lost my foot, applied to environmental sciences. He has published extensively in both the statistical and environmental sciences literatures and written several substantial books establishing the statistical methods as core tools within the environmental sciences. So I'd like to invite Peter Diggle to come up on stage. Thank you. I'm uh, really quite moved by this um, for several reasons. The first is that I, I certainly didn't expect to get this award. And the second is that having been a member of the committee that awarded it, uh, I didn't even know I was eligible for it. <laughs> but, Owing to uh, a deal between David and Sir Richard Branson, I wasn't at the meeting <laughs> in time to take part in the discussion. And I remember David looking at me rather awkwardly when I asked him who'd won the Barnet Award. And I, and I found out the next day it was me, which is extraordinary. Um, but uh, I have to say that, that Vic always intended his initiative in environmental statistics called Spruce, which I'll say more about on Thursday when I give the Barnet Lecture. Uh, and which uh, has, has led to, the, to this, the existence of this award through the, um, uh, the activities of the Spruce Charity that Vic set up. He always wanted environmental science to be interpreted in very broad terms. So he, he organized and, and really was the, the, um, bro the energy behind a series of conferences in environmental statistics, one of which was entirely devoted to health. But he embraced um, environment in the sense of the social, the physical, the, the medical, agricultural, uh, so, um, so I guess uh, I still don't think I should have got it, but I certainly understand why at least, at least I was eligible. Um, Vic was not only a colleague, he was also a friend. And uh, I, um, he, he was very supportive of me from the start of my career in academia 44 years ago. Uh, and he, he showed his, his essential humanity. Vic, those who know Vic might, might actually not immediately think of humanity. He had a certain exterior sort of, what's the word, David? Uh, <laughs> but, you know, he, he, he could be a bit pushy, he could be a bit, you know, uh, very much so. But actually, the humanity of him was that I, I started my academic career in 1974 uh, at the ripe age of 23, knowing nothing about how universities worked. And the person who really sort of helped me find my feet in my department was Vic Barnett. But the, why, why was this special? Well, it was special for two reasons. Um, 
but the main one was that he was no longer working in that department. He'd already got his chair at Bath University. I was at Newcastle University. But he'd actually agreed to come back and give lectures that would otherwise have been a burden on a new member of staff, me. Uh, and so uh, he protected me against a lot of the instant demands that modern academics get placed on them the moment they get their first job. And he showed me around and, uh, you know, we, 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 we became friends. Uh, we, we, you know, our paths drifted together and apart over many years, but um, we, we worked a lot together in, in bursts to do with the Spruce Charity, not over a continuous period. We never wrote papers together. Um, and it was a, a, a moment of great personal sadness for me uh, when I heard of his final illness and his death. Uh, and uh, I'm really pleased that uh, the RSS has seen fit to uh, uh, agree with the Spruce Charity that establishing an award in his name is a kind of fitting tribute. He was a sterling servant of the society as well as serving environmental statistics and indeed was awarded the Chambers Medal of the Society uh, for his, his work. Notably, um, he was treasurer of the society for 10 years and Errol Street was very much his project. And, you know, if he couldn't have taken more interest in it if, he, uh, if it had been his own house he was buying. He, uh, he, he really, didn't he, Nicola? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, wherever you are, Vic, and, uh, but particularly thank you, thank you indeed to the society. I'm enormously grateful. Thank you. So the Royal Statistical Society Research Prize is awarded to a Fellow of the Society near the beginning of their research career for an outstanding published contribution to statistical theory or application. Eligible candidates must be within eight years of the award of their first degree. This year, the Royal Statistical Society Research Prize is awarded to Emmanuel Georgi for his outstanding published contribution at the interface of statistics and epidemiology spanning the development of spatial statistical methods, their application to a range of substantive problems in global population health, and their implementation in open source software. Georgie has published 17 journal articles, including a joint paper in Envirometrics 2017 with Daniela Schulter and Peter Diggle on examining bivariate geostatistical modeling of the relationship between lower lower prevalence and intensity of infection. Manuel. I feel uh, very excited, so you will forgive me if my voice trembles. Um, anyway, so first of all, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Peter Diggle, who, who's been a special person because he's always believed in me. Um, my co-authors and collaborators um, that made winning this prize possible. Um, I'd like to say that uh, as a statistician and uh, as a person, I, I am... I'm deeply in love with this planet and all the cultures that inhabit it. Um, and among these, the African people <coughs> have played a special role. And uh, I think that, that my, my participation to this conference is also a testimony of that. So this afternoon, um, in the Young Statistician section, I, I have been, uh, presented what has been the work that I have done as the Royal Statistical Society coordinator to strengthen our collaboration with the African Institute uh, for Mathematical Sciences and how we think uh, uh, we should move forward in this collaboration. And on Thursday, I, um, I've organized an invited, an invited session that I will chair on geospatial methods with application um, in developing countries. So I, I'd like to keep it short. Huh? to avoid uh, anything else. Uh, but um, to the organizers of this conference, uh, I'd like to say Dioch and Bauer, which is not an insult, but means th <laughs> thank you greatly in Welsh. Thank you. The, um, the next award, is the West Medal, which is established in memory of the chartered statistician John Howard West, who died in 1998, and is awarded for outstanding contributions to the development or communication of official statistics. And the West Medal this year is awarded to Jill Leyland, who has wide experience of using official statistics in her work as a business economist and statistician, and has provided extensive support to the Royal Statistical Society over many years as it developed its strategy on official statistics, 
most notably in connection with proposed new statistical legislation and governance arrangements. More recently, Jill has focused on developing proposals for a new household price index and has led the Society's contribution to the high-profile official reviews into the retail and consumer price indices, a matter in which I hope we're not going to get too embroiled now. Uh, Jill also continues to represent business economic statistics users' view on the future development of official statistics in these areas. So I'd like to ask Jill to... Um... Oh, you're there. Oh, right. <laughs> I was just looking for you. Thank you. It is, of course, always a huge honour to receive an award like this. So I must start by saying a sincere and heartfelt thank you. I want to quote some words that were said by Sir Michael Scholar, who was the first chair of the UK Statistics Authority. And he said these words when he had his confirmation hearing and was being grilled by a House of Commons select committee who wanted to see if he would be the right person. And he said, I believe that good statistics are like sound money or clean water, an absolute necessity. I imagine we would all agree with that in this room, but he was, I assume, given the context, referring specifically to official statistics. We are fortunate in this country to have generally high quality official statistics, but to keep it high quality, official statistics needs not only good statisticians, but also critical friends. And this is, of course, the role that the RSS has been playing, or that we've tried to play. Critical friends, of course, have a duty to criticize when needed, but they also have a duty to fight for, in this case, official statistics. And they also have a duty to encourage and to praise. And one of the pleasures I have had in past years was chairing for several years, seven years, the organizing committee for the RSS Awards for Excellence in Official Statistics. And I never failed every year to be amazed by the ingenuity and quality of some of the entries. And they always gave me hope for the future of official statistics. Like everybody else who's has had an award, I have to thank a lot of people, those whom I've worked with in the um, national, uh, what was then the National Statistics Working Party, who were an amazing group of people, and of course the RSS staff who helped them, who helped us. I never quite knew how the meetings were going to go. There was always a surprise. There was always debate, discussion, argument. We didn't actually come to blows though, and um, a lot of good ideas. But I must also thank one particular person, and that's John Astin, with whom I worked to develop the principles of the household costs indices, which are now being developed by the Office for National Statistics. And if I can give a small plug uh, to that, uh, tomorrow afternoon in here, <laughs> you can hear more about it. Um, they, they have the, what some people find a rather strange idea that we should measure inflation as people actually experience it. So I'll end there. I just want to say that I think the, Ro the Royal Statistical Society must always continue to be the critical friend that official statistics need. Uh, the next award was established by Professor Tony Greenfield, uh, a prominent RSS member, chartered statistician, author and statistical consultant in business and industrial statistics. The aim of this award is to recognize outstanding contributions to the effective application of statistical methods to the manufacturing and allied industries. So the 2018 Greenfield Industrial Medal is awarded to Idris Eckley for his statistical contributions to substantive industrial research problems. His high quality research on change points, a non-stationary time series, has made substantial impact on a range of multinational companies. He has also led an exceptional culture change in the scale and diversity of industrially collaborative research in statistical doctoral training. In particular, he has pioneered a model of co-created fundamental research in partnership with industry within the Story Doctoral Training Center which has had contributions including co-funded PhD projects from over 80 different industrial partners since its inception in 2010. So I'd like to invite Idris to come up on stage.
Well, the Alcava or Gen. A Dialkir Gim Dathas, do your thumb all the other bit of Edelma. I can and where Digal and Egad can have Leather Hungary. Well, I couldn't resist the opportunity, could I? <laughs> so thanks, Jen, and also to the RSS. I am delighted to receive this award. And it's a particularly happy coincidence that it should be in the year when the RSS conference is in Wales. Receiving this award provides a fantastic opportunity for me to say thank you to the many people who have helped inspire, influence, and be a part of the work which this award highlights. First and foremost, I owe much to Guy Nason at Bristol, a fantastic PhD advisor and collaborator who first introduced me to the world of industry-engaged statistics research as both an undergraduate and PhD student, working with him and the scientists at Unilever's Port Sunlight Laboratory. And just as influentially, Guy provided much needed advice and moral support when I decided to return to academia in 2007, following several years working at Shell. I'm also grateful to EPSRC, industrial partners, and all my colleagues and PhD students at Lancaster, without whose support the Story CDT would not be possible. In particular, I would like to say a special thank you to John Torn for being reckless enough to hire me in the first place, and for his unwavering support as we sought to develop the Story CDT. Um, and the model for co-created research in partnership with industry. In parallel, I'd also like to acknowledge three industrial collaborators who've had a major influence on my work. Rob Trelaw and Matt Reed at Unilever and Phil Jonathan at Shell. And to Phil in particular for those innocuous words that he uttered on my first days at Shell, asking me to take a look at a little area called change points to see if it might be of interest. That certainly proved to be the case. Finally, I would like to thank my very, very patient wife, Louise, whose unparalleled support underpins this all. None of this would have been possible without her. So, thank you. The next award is for the Bradford Hill Medal, established in the memory of the distinguished epidemiologist and statistician Sir Austin Bradford Hill, 1897 to 1991, who pioneered the randomized clinical trial, among other things. Hill was president of the society from 1950 to 1952. The medal is awarded to a fellow of the society for outstanding or influential contributions to the development, application, or exposition of medical statistics. And the Bradford Hill Medal this year is awarded to Nikki Best for her exquisite expositions of Bayesian methods through bug software, workshops, lectures, prior elicitations, textbooks, and peer review publications, and for substantive applications ranging from clinical trials and cost effectiveness to epidemiology, and most recently, the organizer optimization of pharmaceutical research programs. Uh, unfortunately, Nikki is unable to join us this evening, uh, but we hope to present her medal at another society event this autumn. The next medal, which is the Howard Medal, which was established, uh, yep, Howard Medal, established in the memory of John Howard, who dedicated himself to prison reform and public health improvements, 1726 to 1790. It is awarded for outstanding contributions to the development or application of social statistics. And this year's Howard Medal is awarded to Colin Aitken whose work is the outstanding example of how a statistician can integrate with those in a substantive area. He's specialized in statistical reasoning in the law and forensic science, and has engaged extensively with practitioners in these areas, developing software for their use and publishing in their applied literature. He's authored a highly regarded and wide-ranging book that brings together a range of techniques uh, from statistics and the evaluation of evidence for forensic scientists, as well as a number of guides for practitioners. He set up the statistics and the law section at the Royal Statistical Society. He's collaborated extensively with practitioners covering areas such as detecting cocaine in banknotes and the use of Bayesian belief works in the analysis of criminal evidence, in which area he's co-authored a recent book. So I'd like to ask Colin up here to receive his award. Great. Well, thank you very much, David, and thank you very much to the Society for this, this great honour. Uh, I'd also like to thank those in the Society have helped uh, to develop this and their support over many years, and more recently with the Stats and Law section. From my own point of view, this all started with a consultancy with a forensic odontologist walking off the street in Glasgow. Uh, into the department where I was doing my PhD. Um, from then, it's developed to a, 
two years in forensic science at Strathclyde, and then up to where we are now with the stats of law section, an international conference, a, a journal in law, probability and risk, which has now got an impact factor of uh, one and a half. Um, so there's tremendous development in the subject. I thank the society again for the recognition for it. I thank also all my friends in forensic science and law. I've talked to many lawyers and forensic scientists probably rolled their eyes in horror at uh, some of the things I've been doing. And I know through a, a, a friend whose brother is a forensic scientist that he thinks I just think it's, it's, these people in ivory towers they don't know what they're talking about. Um, anyway, uh, finally just thank my family uh, for their support. I have been told one of my uh, children did say to me, say, oh, Dad, all you do every day is look at, look at a blank piece of paper. But <laughs> they've come to be a bit more than that. So thank you once again for your recognition of the subject and for the honour. The final award for this evening is the Mardia Prize. The Mardia Prize is the Interdisciplinary Workshop Prize founded by RSS Fellow Kanti Mardia, aims to encourage cutting-edge interdisciplinary work between statisticians and other science communities by funding events or workshops in emerging interdisciplinary areas. And this year's prize is awarded to a team of researchers at the Water Research Institute at Cardiff University. The team proposed to hold two workshops on extreme events in weather, wet weather, I love it. Well, they must have spent ages in choosing that. The, the workshops aim to facilitate discussion and build new partnerships between researchers in statistical and environmental science disciplines with an interest in rare and hazardous events. And I'd like to invite uh, Christian Strokod to receive the prize on behalf of the team. Thank you very much um, to the Hawaii Statistical Society. I think this is a great opportunity for us and uh, as it was mentioned already, this is a team effort and I would like to introduce you to um, as well Marie Ekström and uh, Owen Jones who are also here in the audience. Um, and um, I think this also reflects a little bit the interdisciplinarity because uh, Marie is actually working on climate change impacts and projection science and uh, Owen uh, is never tired of promoting OR methods in environmental science, uh, in energy and sustainability. And uh, myself, I'm coming from the direction of extreme value theory, and we're working under the umbrella of the uh, Water Research Institute at Cardiff University. And um, so the idea with this workshop, Wet Weather, so a WET stands for Workshop on Extremal Trends in Weather. <laughs> So um, it's basically bringing two communities together. This is um, climate scientists and people working in extreme value theory. And um, what we really want to emphasize and put at the heart of the thing is, is learning from each other. So um, really have a forum to discuss uh, recent challenges. And so there are probably many good reasons uh, to do this. I just want to emphasize three. One of them is that this year in the UK, the Met Office um, is releasing um, new uh, climate projections for the UK in November 2018. And so there should be a lot of interesting data to explore. Um, but as it was said already, and Peter Diggle is going to emphasize this, we shouldn't only look at the data, but also at the problems that we want to solve. Second thing, um, we are interested in whether there are some things that have been overlooked so far and something that's um, uh, looked at right now, for instance, in extreme value theory is how do we deal with trends in extremes? And I think this debate is one that we should have in particular in the view of climate change. Um, and uh, thirdly, um, I'm pretty sure that during these workshops, we're not going to be able to solve all these problems. Um, rather, and that's quite nice that we have the opportunity to organize two workshops um, uh, with this money. Um, we want to take things into the future. So um, to, to create this forum in order to build partnerships um, that can then work on these problems. Um, and um, I thank the society very much for giving us this opportunity. Um. <laughs>